Chances are the two biggest financial decisions you'll make in your life are your house and your super. But we spend all our money on wheelbarrows. It's just a metaphor. We love talking about property. And it turned out we were under the reserve. <laughs> but somehow, we don't have the same passion for financial products. Oh, I said sure. If you don't factor in the concessional tax rate for super, am I right? Hashtag rollover. Get out of my fully renovated three bedroom house. I mean, you never see reality TV shows like this. Ben and Jen are running out of time to find their lost super. Because of our superannuation laws, the Australian managed funds industry is one of the biggest in the world. Some people do it themselves, but for the rest of us in not-for-profit industry funds or retail funds, we just don't pay much attention. In fact, most of us are in the fund chosen by our employer, which is weird. I mean, you wouldn't let your boss choose your house for you. So... <laughs> There are plenty of people earning fees on our apathy. Super funds don't put all your money in one basket, but a fair chunk of it is entrusted to fund managers. The idea of a managed fund is that you pay a professional investor to pick good investments, which seems sensible enough. If you'd put 10 grand into a managed super fund last financial year, on average, you'd end up with $12,230. If you'd kept that money under your mattress, you would have made nothing. <laughs> But before you celebrate your fund manager too much, in the same period, the average return of the Australian stock market was even higher. Which means the headline we should pay attention to is this one. And that's not unusual either. From 2003 to 2013, the market average outperformed managed funds by even more. If fund managers were a bit more realistic with you... Marianne! ...you'd probably say something more like this! If you give me that money, I will try and invest it so that you get an above average return. So you can actually do that? No. So what are your fees? Over your lifetime, my fees could be more than $100,000. OK. Uh, are you better at picking stocks than a cat? Well, that would depend on the cat. What about that cat? Ooh, he looks good. In 2012, the Observer newspaper ran a stock picking contest with a cat called Orlando. Over the year, Orlando outperformed three fund managers simply by randomly poring over a copy of the Financial Times. Now, you might think... Maybe it's worth paying more to get a better fund manager. But with Super in Australia, sometimes paying more buys you worse performance. A 2010 study found that for every 1% extra people paid in fees, their returns actually fell by 1.5%. So, can you choose a good funds manager based on their track record of picking winners? I'll have number nine, thanks. Oh! <laughs> nice idea, but no, you can't. Performances often vary, and high flyers one year... Number ten. <laughs> ..often do poorly the next. And then there's fees. Fund managers aren't just trying to beat the market average, they're trying to beat the market average plus the extra fees you pay them. And that's... Very hard. In summary, forget fund managers, you should give all your superannuation money to this cat. Stop! Stop! That cat is an imposter. Who's that? Alan Kohler from Business Spectator. And Eureka Report, Australia's best investment newsletter. What are you doing here, aside from self-promotion? Well, you're about to make a terrible mistake. The cat just got lucky. What do you mean? Let me enlighten you. When choosing super funds, picking winners, is almost impossible. The past cannot foretell the future, and even small fees can eventually overwhelm modest returns. So, instead of trying to beat the market, I should become the market. But is that even possible? Actually, it is. They're called index funds, and they operate by investing in the average of a stock market rather than relying on fund manager predictions. So there's less chance of awful results just average ones. Right. And it's not really average either, because you pay a fee for them as well. So it's the average minus a fee. But... Sam Sorry. Has to... I've got to go now. I have to do a graph for the news. Index funds also get the tick from legendary investment guru Warren Buffett. The key is fees. Because they back the market average instead of using funds managers, index funds can have significantly lower fees. And for long-term investments, those fees are super important. 
A 1% or 2% difference in fees might not sound like much, but over decades, it can add up to tens of thousands of your dollars. If you're not in a low fee fund, you might as well buy your funds manager a boat. Lowering fees was one of the reasons the government gave for introducing my super accounts, which began on the 1st of January this year. You remember? Three, two, one! It means that if your employer's choosing your super fund, they'll have to go with one that has a my super product. That's estimated to save Australians $550 million a year, but they don't have to shift your money into the transparent low fee product until 2017. Oh, yeah. If you want to save money before then, it's up to you. The first thing to do is go to the ATO website. It's a one-stop shop for getting all your super money into a single fund. On average, each Australian worker has about three funds, which means three times as many fees. Ask your fund about the fees they charge. Also, is this a My Super product? ask if they've already got a My Super account that you can transfer into now. Sure, it's not the most interesting thing in the world, but you could save thousands and thousands if only Australians cared more about their super.